What is going on, Reject Nation? It is Greg Alba here. And it is John Humphrey over here. So we uh, watched the Oat Studio Volume 1 Racka video from the ch channel Racka Racka. <laughs> <laughs> Neil Racka. Blomkamp's <laughs> Racka. Today we're going to watch Firebase. That's right. The second in the uh, Volume 1 of Oat Studio's new experimental shorts. John, why don't you tell me what Oat Studios is? Alright, if you're not familiar, guys, Oat Studios is an experimental uh, film production company spearheaded by Neil Blomkamp, who you know from movies like District 9, Chappie, Elysium. This is his new project, and they have everything in-house. It's a full-fledged film studio. They're making these experimental shorts, and they operate on an open-source format, which actually allows you, if you go online to Steam, you can download elements of the films, engage with your own creativity. They're pushing forward, innovating. It's pretty cool stuff, and from what we saw yesterday with Raka, I mean, these... These shorts are pretty insane. They are pretty insane. Yeah. And today, now this video is up, today we're catching up because not only have subscribers been asking us to check it out, but the Zygote, the fourth edition, is out today. Yes. And uh, we wanted to watch all of them so we can be caught up with everything. Mm -hmm. And the Zygote one I hear a lot of great things about. I saw some images from it. I'm telling you guys. Pretty uh, chilling. After watching Raka, I'm pretty excited to get this going. John, enough talking. Let's do this. Let's do it. And the camera cuts every 12 minutes, so we might have to cut it. It's suitable for everyone. We saw the first one. It's I showed my child the first one. And loved it. <laughs> Firebase. <laughs> the world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 14. That's from the New Testament. Oh my Whoa. gosh. <laughs> that's, a, that's a way to oh boy. you in, huh? <laughs> that is a beating. Oh, that's one of the humans turned alien. Oh boy. Vietnam. They've been around for a while, huh? This is a new vibe. You know, I saw footage from the Vietnam War. It looks like actual footage from it. It might be. I mean, there's a lot of stock footage out there. Whoa! <laughs> oh, that is... Oh, man. This is not... Restricted mode friendly for sure. Nope. <laughs> Whoa! Ew. Gross. Oh, what are they doing? Ooh. Wear some gloves, man. Well, they all got typhus anyway. <laughs> Whoa! That's definitely real footage. Ooh. Oh, how fascinating. Uh -huh. That's a lot of a lot of dead people. It, yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, the stock footage effect makes it look even more real. <laughs> that is Damn government covering all this up. It's pretty horrifying. Oh, well, we're about to get into some historical fiction. No, this is still stock footage. It's still stock better, footage. Better yeah. camera. <laughs> Vietnam War was an ugly, ugly thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sound designs. That's what I want in a war, is a spear. 
<laughs> and then never have to reload. I'd love if they just walked in on De Niro and Christopher Walken doing the two runners. <laughs> <laughs> just altering their timeline. That's how you get it done. <laughs> whoa, yeah. whoa. your friend, Sergeant Hines. When you wandered off, your unit thought you had deserted. What did you court-martial? That's not a real You're still idea. drawn to it. You have to kill it, yeah? Too late, though. River God did this three days ago. Get some men up here to clean this up. Come on, let's head out. I have something to show you. like an anthology series. Yeah. Oh, it's cool. I thought it was going to be like one storyline. Interesting. Yeah, we're on fire base in Quattro. Outside paid in on the border of Cambodia. We set up Quattro as a base for tracking the river god. You know who he is? I need you to do something for me, honey. I give you info. You do what I ask. Understand? The river god was a Vietnamese farmer. If we keep the survivors of his attacks in Quattro at the field hospital, there's someone there I want you to meet. The kid, named Black. The only survivor of the river god is still caught. That yeah, really feels like a Vietnam movie, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I, I wouldn't die. <laughs> like the production value is huge yeah. on these things. <laughs> Doc told me you might be able to shed some light on some things for us. We got our asses whipped by a VC ambush. We wait for reinforcements, so when those soldiers came, they were, uh... 
They were monsters in the shape of men. Now they wouldn't die, not by shooting them. So we retreated to Firebase Tar Heel, or we tried to, but Tar Heel is gone. It's just fucking gone. That's when I called an airstrike. We lit that jungle on fire. We burned everything. How fascinating. There he was, uh -huh. standing there. <laughs> Not running. No pain. Invisible. Except for the napalm just sticking to him. Something I'll never be able to explain. How do you see that? It just doesn't make sense. Look, I'm not here to connect the dots for you. The events at Tar Heel are classified. I got men in this unit I trust. Men I know, men I shed blood with. And they're saying things happen to them that they can't explain. My boys are saying they saw the devil. The devil. Yes. I want your men to help us kill the devil. I think the CIA better start to explain what the fuck is going on here, or you're gonna have a mutiny on your hands. Damn government. Gotta communicate. Who really shoots these like a horror movie? Yeah, there's so much foreboding. Like a horror war movie. Please state your name. Bracken. Corporal Richard Bracken, sir. All right. Please recount the events at Firebase Tar Heel. How did you get burned? What happened? Wow. They started weird. There was some, uh... Wow. Something along the riverbank. The seals have found it. Paul came down for us to get some intel on it. Camera guy. It says it cuts every 12 minutes. Alright, let's do this again. On it. Camera guys and air cap were sent with us. We saw it. It was, uh. I don't know what it was. What happened to Firebase Tar Heel Corporal? Shooting everywhere. They had us pinned down. Whoa, Ew. Oh, all my buddies got fucked up. Yeah, I mean, bad. Yeah. As you see that, it's like accumulating flesh. Oh. Oh. How are they doing this? And I just see them there looking at me. The river god. Wow. He's looking right at me. I never felt anything like that. Felt? One minute I'm in the jungle, looking at that thing. The next I'm in South Carolina, back on the day we were going to deploy. I don't mean like a dream or nothing. I mean I was in America. And? The planes... They were all destroyed. They were under attack. There was Russian aircraft. I don't like Megs or nothing. 
Cobain flame napalm. Rush Everyone man. was burning. They were burning us. Soldiers burning. Like hell. in Charleston Air Base? Oh, it's just like chills. Are they all dead? <laughs> Charleston's safe. No, but it did happen. It did. Because then, uh... Freddie and the boys, they pulled me out of the ditch. I was still on fire. Here. Yeah, here, in the jungle. Wow. I was like, here again, but on fire. Like they pulled me out of South Carolina into Vietnam. <laughs> Raising the dead up like ghosts. Oh, that's a nightmare. Just making their, uh, their insides like hard, like a cockroach. Uh -huh. but they look like spiders or something. Oh, that's so oh, that's nasty. So gross. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. I asked if anyone else had seen them. Uh, the God. No one else had. Thank you, Sergeant Bracken. Dude, who's that soldier, man? He's a good actor. Yeah. Corporal Bracken will be flown back to the States, enrolled in MK search, and his name will be stricken off the rolls here. To officially be MIA, along with the 318 other Americans lost at Tar Heel. As of this moment, Firebase Tar Heel never existed. What are you doing, CIA? Get some rest. We head out in a few hours. Yeah, I'll sleep in the <laughs> Try. Same kind of aliens. They don't look. The one at the beginning looked more mantis like. Start peeling your flesh off. I can't tell if something's actually wrong, like cosmically, or if he's. Oh no. That's not what he's to. I 
if they just cut and he just masturbated. Yeah. <laughs> really in line with the tone. <laughs> Gotta pass the tone. Spears, man. All these men. They're gonna die tonight. You know that, right? I'm not sure you care if these soldiers live or die. Uh, you don't even care if you live or die. Maybe that's how it works. Who are you? What are you becoming? These details are slipping away from you, aren't they? I can help. Who are you? What are you becoming? Because I have these dreams. More like visions. It's trying to tell me something. I just can't understand what it's saying. It just sounds like noise. Whoa! I spoke to soldiers in your previous unit. I've heard all the accounts about you. Hines isn't meant to die. Hines is protected by a divine hand. Whoa. Objects were put in your path to shield you. Put there to protect you at exactly the right moment. you from the right piece of shrapnel. It's almost as if life itself knew you were coming. The universe keeping you alive, saving you as though it has a plan for you. And the river god, that man you're compelled to hunt, he is an error, a mistake, plain and simple. Life wants him gone. But what is he? A simple villager. Hmm. Twist? He had no connection to the Viet Cong. He had a wife. He had children. fabric tore around him. I've been there. The local villagers who knew him, they began calling him the River God. He wandered the Mekong, leaving a wake of destruction. I don't even think he knows he's doing these things. These horrors manifesting reality through his subconscious thoughts, changing matter inside the dead. How crazy. He's animating them as visions of his own hell. <sighs> Eventually, he wandered into an NBA base begging for help. Should be the last time it cuts during a reaction. By that point, his flesh had entirely burned off. Wow. Wow. Him, lighting him up for us to track. We will find him. 
This is the electromagnetic coil gun. It's firing projectiles at about 120 at the speed of light. Your Blomkamp weapons! Yeah. This. <laughs> Future this tech? This is the real jewel. Passive. It creates a magnetosphere. Positive, negative polarity. Everything about this is designed to keep reality unbroken so you can function. <laughs> Your Blomkamp suits! Protected from the breakdown in space time. We call it a relativity castle. It amplifies the gift you already have. Amplifies the gift you already have. Whoa. Put on the horn, my god. That you may be able to stand against the schemes. The devil. Oh, leave him oh. wanting more. Oh, what? Leave him wanting more. Damn. <laughs> you know. I'd like to hop into a review when the credits are done. But I will say, man, that was that was awesome. I like that more that than the first one. Compel yeah, I well, know. yeah, you know, because this is going to a period piece, you know, and it's yeah. also mixing in some more, like, almost uh, fantasy elements. Yeah, you know? and I like those touches from Neil Blomkamp when he does that with his, his films. He he blends sci-fi and fantasy together oftentimes. Well yeah, and like at least and at least in thematically, but it seems like it's very apparent here. Yeah, you like know. theoretical sci-fi almost. Yeah. It's like you've got the cool tech and the cool designs and everything and like, you know, it's captured yeah. amazingly, but also, yeah, just breaching it out into that that whole thing about like his just this guy's world broke it's apart grief. in such a manifested all such this. an awful moment that, yeah. that he transformed like and I love I love those kind of supernatural type of characters who manifest out of yeah. their own pain and grief. Well that almost sounds like a story that, that you know, you might have Especially in that time, it sounds almost like a like a horror story, like a ghost yeah. story of some kind that, you know, would spook you out in the jungle. Man, oh man. You know, I I don't uh oftentimes like we get requests to do like long ass videos to check yeah. out and honestly, John and I we don't John and I, we don't really look forward to sitting in front of a camera <laughs> and, and watching something like this. We prefer to just like sit on our couch and just yeah. watch it, especially Take with the it length like it the is. Movie, yeah. But I gotta say, that went by so fast. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that was incredibly gripping and entertaining. Totally the whole time. I wasn't even. I didn't even care about the amount of time it was because <laughs> when it ended, I was like, "What? <laughs> we gotta see the showdown." <laughs> yeah. The River God! It makes me wonder how they're building all this, because the first one ends on a note two with Amir and Nosh and Sigourney Weaver's character. They're going to go out on a very specific mission. That takes place in 2020, and then this takes place during the Vietnam War. Yeah. And it ends in a similar fashion of, we got to go take down the enemy. And the enemy, the aliens, look different yeah. than the other ones. So I'm wondering, is like by the time we get to a, the last installment, is it all going to come together? Yeah. Because I'm hoping they do that instead of just keep ending on these cool cliffhangers of, uh, they're going to go take down the, the alien enemy. I obviously, I don't know what their brainstorm and what their idea is from the inside, you know, yeah. like what all this might be leading to. But I wonder if also, you know, over the course of volumes, you know, we'll see a different structural thing take place. You Hopefully. Know? These all seem at least pretty different as of now. Well, I, I think that, you know, like we said in our first one for Raka that it takes, it, it's really building up environment, mood, tone, mm -hmm. and while they establish all that there, and this takes place in a different era, so I thought we were going to have to do a lot of reestablishing that. Mm -hmm. I was more invested in the characters in this one, probably because I, I just saw, I've been watching the documentary, the 60s from CNN, yeah. and they just covered the Vietnam War, and it was yeah. the first time in my life where, I mean, I've heard about Vietnam War my whole life, but it was the first time it really struck me. I remember he came through the door, and yeah. I was like, dude, I've been watching the 60s documentary, and the <laughs> Vietnam War 
poor man. Why'd we do that? Oh, what, boy. Why'd this happen? That yeah. was a sticky situation. Yeah, I was, like, mad about it happening as if it just happened recently. Yeah. And I didn't know what uh, Firebase was about it. It took place during this time. I really appreciated that. You know, my, my closest connection to understanding what Vietnam War is like is watching films like Apocalypse Now or mm. Platoon. Or Kong Skull Island. Or Kong Skull Island, <laughs> which I'm gonna, I want to touch on in a second because I love that it really captured that type of tone and style. I have this historical fiction with its Apocalypse Now, traumatic, we shouldn't be here type of territory. Yeah. And it felt, yeah, like like this is a slog for all involved, yeah. you know. And the mixture of stock footage, yeah. uh, doing the stock footage effect was really good here because it made it look that much more real when they were doing the crazy sci-fi stuff going on. It did make me think halfway through, like, this is what Kong Skull Island kind of wanted to be. Yeah. In terms of, we want to take the Vietnam War, but infuse it with these other elements yeah, of genre. Yeah. And then it kind of just cans all of the Vietnam War elements and just turns into Kong Skull Island for most of the film. Here, I know this is just a short film, but it kept that Vietnam War flair of a soldier, traumatized soldier being witness to all these things and having to be involved in the violence mm -hmm. with the whole alien aspect as well, which I really appreciated when I was watching this. Oh yeah, well and even things like that, that whole interlude where they jump to Charleston and it's like, you know, the, the Russian... The Russian the ship. strange Russian ship is landing yeah. and all that stuff. But that actor, that, like I... Who is that guy, man? He was great. Yeah, I'm not as familiar with the, the cast in this one, but yes. Yeah, Especially the guy who was uh, the the corporal, like that guy was so natural. Yeah, his and, monologue like, was amazing. Yeah, I come to appreciate about you know Neil Blomkamp joints in general, but it's it's holding up here. You know, it's like we all we all kind of gawked when he brought Charlotte Copley like big onto the scene because we're like, wow, that guy's a a terrific actor, and it seems yeah. like he just knows a lot of pretty terrific actors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even if you don't like films like Elysium or Chappie, I'm like, the acting is still really damn good. Because this really was Apocalypse Now. Uh, I, I, the main character reminded me of Martin Sheen, mm -hmm. and how Martin Sheen is, you know, he's this traumatized war vet, and they're bringing him in on a very specific mission. Yeah. Have the tape recordings yeah. and all that stuff, and the interviews going on that he's getting to listen in on, which is putting him on this very specific mission. But I love that from the first one. And then this one, they're building a whole mythology mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. It's, this is a real world exploration. And I like the anthology style, and I'm hoping it's he's building a cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a cinematic universe! <laughs> the OCU! Yeah. It does feel like it's building that. Because honestly, I'd be kind of bummed if it didn't, this all didn't eventually come back and they conclude some of this. Yeah. But they are calling this volume one, so maybe they're volume one all the all these specific storylines, and then we're all they're all gonna finally wrap up eventually. Well, they they said in their in their their sort of mission statement it's their hope that at least some of these could maybe become feature films eventually that would be really yeah. cool because this one i'm really yeah. drawn to i just love historical fiction in general i'm not too familiar with stories that really do historical fiction during the vietnam war era the infusion here was great one thing we haven't touched on designs in here oh yeah the amount of flesh peeling there was going on here <laughs> well that's <laughs> crazy i mean any neil blomkamp movie you watch you know him pretty well for his unique design work there's a look you know like at least it's consistent. There's certain earmarks. This of... is his most different. Yeah, definitely. Because it, and you know, it, going back in time so far, yeah. you know, it seems like he's kind of flexing a different side this of is that sci-fi horror. But this, yeah, this one is very sci-fi war horror. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, and and you know, beyond just the technology designs, like yeah, the the designs of the the gore and the manifestation of the physical yeah. impact of this is. That was one of the most mind-blowing mm -hmm. things about this was, like, the effects. Like, yeah. especially when they're peeling off body parts and stuff. And it's, like, it's really gross, but it's also so, like, super what? intriguing, yeah. you know? Yeah, and then the creature, when he's just a skeleton, and then it's assembling itself from mm -hmm. flesh, and then it has this perfect design by the end. That, that effect nuts. nuts. I don't know how they did that, but that looked amazing. That looked incredible, you know? man. I mean, there are certain effects that blend in more seamlessly than others and especially when you have you know the the older look with bigger effects you know sometimes you can tell but especially when the 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 river god that creature comes together like that looked like it was there <laughs> yeah yeah you know and like there it seems like the experiments they're doing yeah. are, are really breaking some ground in terms of effects and, and, and like the that. river god element the character does have um that more of the fantasy element like the by the time it's fully assembled it did kind of look 
I don't know, like a Lord of the Rings type of character or a Sauron right. type of character when he's fighting in It the did army. look like kind of a mythical war creature. Yeah, you know. yeah. So it makes sense why they call it the River God. And then even right. with like the humans being embodied, it did have this like zombie invasion of the body snatchers <laughs> type of vibe to that it That was too. eerie. And they, you know, great, great body language acting. Yeah. You know? I feel like the one connective tissue is the jungle music and having this like jungle war territory vibe <laughs> going yeah. on. But you know, I mean, there's there's a good uh, a through line of slumminess, you know, yeah. whatever the circumstances are, you know, we're we're never in a very nice place for very long yeah. in a lot of these. And I think we all, we also kind of got what we wanted. Coming off of Raqqa into this one, you know, we're getting a more focused... Uh, Takes its time more, because yeah. the Raqqa the is a lot of detail and explanation and, and while hopping around with small character moments. This one, Raqqa, yeah. felt really took its time and pacing a lot more. It isn't like a few minutes longer. And the dialogue, you know, because of that, flows differently. Like, there's more writing in this yeah. one, which is nice. And there's, you know, yeah. more character which I know we expressed a, a, a wish for getting to know some characters. And you a get bit some Neil Blomkamp touches, the special guns, the special suit, but this really is a different side because when you see Raka, you're like, this is super vintage Blomkamp. Yeah, yeah. But when you watch this one, you're like, I would guess this is a Neil Blomkamp. But I wouldn't Definitely be entirely inspired by it. Yeah, <laughs> but I wouldn't be entirely sure if it was Neil Blomkamp. It's funny, as troublesome as video game movies have become, like there is a, a, a Oh, you can feel the video game inspiration. I can yeah. feel that this guy likes games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, very apparent. <laughs> in a good way. And I feel like this is some of the best translation of what's cool about games to yeah. cinema. Just just throughout his work. Yeah, and, and it comes out more in this stuff, you know, because... I have an idea. He should do a Halo movie. That might work. Produced by Peter Jackson or Steven Spielberg. Or Steven Spielberg. You never know. You never know, man. I'm think... surprised they've never tried, tried to, to do that. that. Yeah. I gotta give it to him. Every time, like, some kind of big property, it seems like, is about to come together and does it, we get something even cooler. Yeah. yeah. We something got this more original. Nine. Yeah. Yeah, now we got Oats, like, and, and yeah, this is, you know, he's got a very distinct style, and, and what I, again, appreciate about what this adds to his style, what both of these shorts have added in, in their own way is... Like you said, the horror elements, the foreboding, and, like, they have been gripping. Yeah. You know, like, I've been gripped by both of these genuinely in a way that a lot of big blockbuster Dude, movies I, I've seen. time flew happen. by on this. Uh, yeah. Time, like, flew by. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is exciting to me. Well, we're going to watch the third one now, yeah. which I hear is three times the amount of length. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, um, the next one's supposed to be, like, only four minutes long, right? Yeah, yeah. But then I think Zygo, the fourth one that just came out, is uh, the actual, like, another lengthy one. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm actually, re I'm really enjoying these. Neil Blomkamp! Well, and if you go on, too, if you go on Steam and you watch, uh, or I think they're on YouTube, too, some of the, like, the weird infomercials, too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, they released some of them on YouTube. Completely. Like, the cooking ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> completely different style, <laughs> tone, look, everything, and, and I, I watched one of them this morning. Oh, those are strange. Well, I think this <laughs> is a good way. I think it's a great idea, because... You know, one thing that I felt people didn't understand about Chappie, and then uh, we felt people didn't understand about Chappie, and then when we heard Neil Blomkamp talk about it recently, it was like the crossing of different types of genre and style that people didn't quite catch on to. Yeah. And I feel like here he just gets to really do that in short film format. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's he's good at, at trans... He and his crew, you know, everybody, all the elements come together. I always feel a lot when I'm watching yeah. his movies. They always make me feel a certain way, both in my head and just, you know, getting caught up in it and moving and stuff. They're always very evocative. Yeah. I've never seen a bland Neil Blomkamp anything. <laughs> well, you guys, I, I highly suggest, if, if, if you only watched our reaction and watched the video from there, I highly suggest pulling this up on your TV or your computer and watching yeah. the whole thing in the full screen format because, man, that was something special. Mm -hmm. And I uh, can't wait for the rest. If you're into what they're doing with Oat Studios and you want to contribute and get involved, if you go on Steam, uh, you can, I think it's like five bucks, you can download... I believe $4.99. $4.99. <laughs> uh, for each of these shorts, at least, they have um, these packages that have, like, uh, high-quality file versions of uh, of each short. They have the dailies, they have the sound stems, they have nice. the concept art, the 3D models. So, you know, you can take a look at all that, which is awesome. But, you know, if you're so inclined, you can actually make stuff out of it, too. So. Uh, subscribe to Oat Studios' channel yeah. on YouTube. Check them and out. Subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. He is Dad John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram, social media manager of Blumhouse. Follow me at the Greg Alba. We have an Instagram apparently now that John started up. I did. We have Real a pa Patreon. So go check out our Patreon for exclusive perks and rewards, my peeps.